My name's Jean Lu. I'm a sound engineer, and at the moment, I'm working on the Akagera concert where I'm taking care of the spatialization aspect. So it's quite a small venue with less than 200 seats, 300 capacity with the tiers folded back. The acoustics are very controlled, quite dry, so ideal for spatialization, for playing with the direct sound and bringing an additional dimension to the spectator's experience. So we're using a Nexo system. We have two P12s out front and six ID24s for the bottom room, giving us the option for immersive and surround sound. Up top we have a balcony with two P12s and two ID24s behind, covering the immersive aspect. For the console, we're equipped with an Allen & Heath SQ5 and we have two RIOs on the stage. This all communicates on a Dante network, which enables a particularly fluid interaction with the SPAT revolution. The 360 Music Factory offers a very pleasant setting for working in immersive. The whole system's already here, on the contrary to the concert we did a month ago with Akagera, where we bought a part of the sound system, the console, etc. Here, it's right out of the box, everything's already installed, the spat's already here, it's a very accessible configuration. The on-site system is reliant on eight main speakers that surround the listener. So one of the objectives was to get hold of the blueprint of their placement, then draw up what we call a speaker arrangement into the SPAT, by entering the placement of each speaker into the program, then from that configuration creating a binaural simulation. This then enables me to listen in binaural from home, outside the venue, approximating what may happen during the concert. This helps me to think about many things, to begin distributing the sounds within the space, to start imagining soundscapes, to start playing with the reverb, to envisage how the concert will play out. To best prepare for this concert, I got hold of a multi-track recording of the group that was recorded at a previous concert. So I have here 14 tracks. The first seven for the drums, three tracks for the marimba, one DI for the vibraphone, and a piezo for the trombone. I'm sending each of these tracks to an AUX track in Reaper, and it's on these AUX tracks that I'll load the Send plugins. These AUX tracks are then summed to a bus where I've loaded the Return plugin in order to retrieve the SPAT signal. In SPAT Revolution, I have all my inputs that correspond to my Send plugins in Reaper. That's these tracks here. Each of these inputs has a corresponding source, and these sources are routed to a room. It's this room that will allow me to work virtually in the acoustic space of the concert hall. In order to stay true to the conditions of the concert, I've created a speaker arrangement that corresponds to that of the venue. So I'll show you how to create this speaker configuration. I'm going to load an 8.0 preset that I'll then duplicate. I'll call it 360 Music Factory 2. Apply. So I'll begin by renaming the different tracks. I'll also add an extra channel for the LFE. In SPAT Revolution, you only need to indicate LFE and the speaker will automatically be considered as a sub. I'll now enter the speaker coordinates. I obtained all this information thanks to the blueprint made on the Nexo NS1. This program was used to design the infrastructure of the venue. Now the last step is to click on the little compute button that will calculate a virtual position for the speakers. In fact, it's just a set of delays and gains that enable a calculation of the speaker positions in order to locate them in a virtual circle. So now I've set up my room with my diffusion configuration, we're going to see how we can monitor that. And of course, I don't have a system in 1000.1 with me to be able to listen back under adequate conditions. So I'll delete what I have here. Remove. So to set up a monitoring system, I'll begin by creating a master. Link the master to my room. Then I'll click on the binaural monitoring button to create a conversion block between our 8.1 system and the binaural. Then I'll select the three blocks, so the master, the binaural monitoring and the output, retype command L, 
and there, it's all patched and automatically in the right format. In my binaural monitoring block, I can also select the HRTF which is best suited to this work. I generally tend to use KMA, but I recommend that you spend a little time listening to the different transfer functions in order to find the one that works best for you, both in terms of timbre and spatialization. Now that we have our binaural monitor to listen to our 8.1 room, I'm going to create my main send based on the basic principle. I'll simply replace each source right there where it is, on the real send. So for that, I'll select each source, of course, and either move it with the mouse in the 3D view in SPAT, or use the different position pots in order to move them. So something I like to do in this kind of context is to keep the kick and snare central while however exaggerating just a bit the placement of the tongs. So now I've placed my drums, I'll do the same with the marimba. Now that I've placed my instruments in the space, there are a certain number of things that I'll be able to anticipate with regards to the space in which the concert will take place. The first thing is that with the environment being small, I know that there are certain sources on which I'll want to remove the early reflections from the reverb in SPAT, as the venue will give me a lot of this. And what I'll want to add, above all, is the tail of the reverb, to bring a sense of distance and glue to the ensemble of sources. So I can already say that in general I want to remove the early reflections and a priori on certain sources, for example the vibraphone and marimba, I perhaps want to leave it. That's just a projection of what will happen in the concert. One of the limits when using binaural monitoring is that the different panning laws are more evident on the timbral effects than the localization effects. So, it's quite complicated to anticipate the effect these panning laws will have on the concert. That said, it literally took me five minutes on the day of the concert. I stood in the middle of the room with a little improvised workstation and my sound mise en scène already prepared, in the default angular mode to begin with. Then I simply tried the different panning laws, knowing more or less how each law worked. When I got to DBAP, I said to myself, OK, this is the one. I then moved around the room a little and found that the result was quite coherent, all the while keeping in mind where I'd placed the instruments. So there, I found that really interesting with regards to the acoustics and the direct sound that I had in the venue. For me, playing an immersive concert in a venue that isn't equipped with the right sound system requires at least two days. It's a whole day's installation where we sync the system and we take the time to do it properly. Then it's a day's work with the artists, doing the sound. Naturally, it's something that takes time. We've been in that position several times with Akagera, whether it's during a residency where we have plenty of time, or elsewhere and we've been stuck with only one day, so we've had to work quickly. Those days were intense. Having to do everything to get it all working, sync the system, sound check, mixing, plus on top of that, the immersive aspect in the venues that aren't made for it. It's a real technical challenge. On the other hand, when we turn up to a venue that's fully equipped, it's clear. If we're two, one taking care of the traditional mixing and the other just the immersive aspect, it doesn't take any longer to put together than the normal concert. 
Thank you.